The first alarming thing, zinc reading of 13 micrograms per liter. And we've had some Monty bleach out incidents lately. So unfortunately, he does have flu. This is why we scrape multiple times for several weeks. At night, we turn this little light on and it mimics the moon. And this is what it looks like when they are all trapped in there. Water changes. We love them, we hate them. Regardless, we all do them. Some of us do them weekly and some of us wait much longer. Generally, there are two reasons to do a water change. One is for routine maintenance, and two is if something goes wrong. So we're doing water changes on system one right now. We're gonna get it all drained, and we're slowly filling it up through the chiller because we're keeping this tank at 74 degrees right now. At Polo Reef, Andrew and the team, they maintain routine water changes, but when it comes to massive systems like the 17,000 gallon tank, they're driven mostly by ICP tests. This week's ICP test came back and has the team a little concerned, causing them to act quickly. Here's Andrew to explain. We got our mass spec ICP back in the 17,000 um, and we saw some things that needed to be done and changed. The first alarming thing was a screamingly high zinc reading of 13 micrograms per liter. It's supposed to be two, three, four, five tops. And we don't know where that zinc's coming from. So immediately what we did is we stopped dosing the zinc. We took out one of the black buckets that we made the do-it-yourself clam bucket. We're hoping it's not those brute trash cans that are being down there, but that would be the next thing to check. In the meantime, we've done several water changes and have changed the GFO, which will absorb the, the excess zinc. In previous episodes, the team built DIY GFO filters from bins and trash cans. These were built to stop the flow of unwanted GFO from entering the system. Now the team thinks this may be creating an issue with the zinc levels. You can check these builds out in the link in the description below. As Andrew reviews the ICP, John is working on a pump upgrade to help solve a pretty big issue. So this is the ABIS 400. This is the uh, one of the flow powerheads that we use in the main tank. The one that we have is sucking in fish. So we just got these cages for it. So I'm gonna assemble it on this one so that when we do a dive, we can just swap them out and then put the cage on the next one and keep working our way along. Bigger tanks like the 17,000 gallon need big flow, and to achieve that, they need very large pumps. As always, the safety of the fish at Polo Reef is top priority, and adding upgrades to protect them, it's a no-brainer. So the, the cage is attached to the power head now, but now, being that we keep this thing so close to the surface of the water, on the one that's in there, we had to build a little shroud so it didn't vortex air in. We have to make a makeshift shroud for this one before we install it on Tuesday. Changing a pump this large is no walk in the park, and it will take a well-orchestrated dive to achieve. Leave a comment down below of any safety measures you made at home to protect your fish. With the Abyss assembly complete, Alex the Vet pops into the lab to help the team clear space for another Polar Reef project. This one could really help progress the hobby. So we're gonna be trying to raise um, some shrimp. These are called Peterson shrimp. So we're quite excited, we really like them. Quite difficult to get, or we've had a little bit of a challenge getting them. Um, so we're trying to breed them in-house. Uh, one of my interests is breeding shrimp. I have experience with some pollock shrimp, I've never done Peterson shrimp. So we're gonna give that a go. And we're gonna also be breeding some peppermint shrimp as well, uh, just for the polo experience and fun. We get into something else to add to our tanks. And also we know they're clean if we're bred in house. Uh, and also it's just good experience with larval management. This project, it's an important one for not only Polo Reef, but also the hobby. Shrimp are super important for any reef tank and breeding them in house could provide a lot of value. Knowing where they come from can ease any possibilities of unwanted pests entering the tank. This particular setup will include two larvae traps in two different systems. Here's Max to walk us through how it works. So this is a larvae collector, the Vossen's larval trap. At night, we turn this little light on and it mimics the moon and all the larvae will get trapped into there. And this is what it looks like when they are all trapped in there. All these little white specks are the baby peppermint shrimp. Outside of this being a polo reef first, this project, it's just amazing. Breeding anything in a lab is a huge accomplishment and takes out many steps involved in receiving these beautiful creatures. Alex the Vet and the Polo team are super excited to share the results with all of you at home. Stay tuned for updates on the progress. As Jonathan was working on the Abyss Pump, 
he was made aware that one of the pumps on the 280 gallon system was making some noises that just didn't sound right. In true Polo refashion, he hits the pause button and pivots over to take a look. So today you also noticed that one of the pumps was uh, cavitating. So we uh, removed it, we were gonna replace it and then saw that there were some snails stuck in the impeller. We subsequently checked the rest and there was other debris stuck in the pumps. So we uh, serviced all three pumps in the 280 gallon system here and just goes to show you that you need to check your pumps on the regular. Luckily, this issue was easy to fix. It goes to show that even with the strict maintenance schedule, sometimes things happen and you just have to roll with the punches. Meanwhile, Andrew continues to review the latest ICP test and he comes across something else that has him even more concerned. The other thing that we started to see is the sulfate start to creep up right there. It's climbing to the 3000 and we've had some Monty bleach out incidents lately. So what we do is knock that down. That's from the sulfur reactor putting out sulfuric acid and the sulfates tend to rise over time. And the way to knock that down is just to do a sulfate free water change. So we substitute our magnesium sulfate bag for magnesium chloride. Mm -hmm. And so we do a, a sulfate free water change and the percentage of the water change we do in the tank will drop this down to normal levels. So if we do a 3000 gallon, which is 20% roughly, water change of sulfate free, this sulfur, sulfate number will come down 20%. So he's making the water right now to do it. We haven't ha done it in several months. Yeah. It's the first time we've noticed this number start to creep up. And it just is what it is with a sulfur reactor. Water changes on the 17,000 gallon tank are no easy tasks. It takes a lot to get them done. If you want to see a Polo Reef water change in action, you can check it out in the link in the description below. Hey boys, good morning. Okay, we got the new ICP resort for 17K. Uh, sulfate, look at that dropped perfectly right down to the yep, number. Yep, that's what we wanted. 2685 from near yep. 3000. Yep. Sulfate free water change that's worked. Water, yep. Bingo. Let's check the zinc. Oh, wow. From 13 to 3. Yeah. So obviously the GFO sucked the zinc up. Uh, the water changes helped. And that black plastic Home Depot non food grade container. I think that was the source of the zinc. Got it down to safe, nice levels, and we'll see the next test to make sure it doesn't climb. Earlier, John installed the cage on the Abyss pump for the 17,000 gallon tank. The last step in the process was to add a shield to help stop a common problem. Joe pops in to lend a helping hand, and just like that, the Dream Team is back in action. These pumps, they're no joke, and they're built for some serious water movement. With the new upgraded pumps installed and the custom built shield complete, the 17,000 gallon tank, it's in great shape. There's no lengths Andrew and the team won't go to make their fish and coral even more comfortable. It's the Polo Reef way. Back in the lab, Alex stops in for the day and he's working on rehabbing one of the newest additions to Polo Reef. In case you missed it, this beauty arrived at Polo and the size shocked everybody. Oh, it finally came, huh? Wow, it's beautiful. It's fat. Yeah. The link for the episode is in the description below. Don't forget to check it out. Today, he plans on scraping the fish to see if it's ready to go into the 17,000 gallon tank. So unfortunately he does have fluke. This is why we scrape multiple times over several weeks, just to make sure that we catch everything. And unfortunately he did, we did find a single fluke on him. So he's gonna be treated with prazi and he's not going to the 17,000 until he's ready. Alex unfortunately finds a single fluke on the false personifer. This is why Polar Reef keeps protocols in place to avoid unwanted pests entering the system. This beautiful fish will have to wait a little longer to be treated before entering the 17,000 gallon tank. As the day winds down, Andrew has one more thing on his mind. With all the ICP talk, he can't help but to focus on the clams. No matter what is thrown at Andrew, he never backs down, and he's still fully invested in caring for these beauties. Alex the Vet is investigating some recent clam deaths to get to the root cause. And Phoebe, she's there for moral support. Good girl, Phoebe. So we're gonna be doing some necropsies on some clams right now. We're gonna look for different protozoal bacterial diseases potentially, as well as taking samples for cultural sensitivity, as well as taking samples for our bacteriophage project. And we've, again, we've had some difficulties with clams in the past couple months. So we're really trying to get to the bottom of it. And so some of the images you may see might be a little gory, um, but again, it's all for science. Losing any wildlife in this hobby is never what we want. 
Unfortunately, it happens. Instead of just calling it a loss, Polo Reef takes the extra steps to understand why. We might not have the answers right away, but the more we look, the more we might find. So Alex the Vet makes sure no stone is unturned to find answers. It's pretty obvious that in this hobby, water, it's everything. Having a good understanding of what is happening in your tank can help guide you in the right direction. At Polo Reef, this is magnified, and the smallest imbalance can take out what has taken years to build. Routine maintenance and quick decision making can make or break you. At Polo Reef, Andrew and the team understand that they have a responsibility, not only to the wildlife they keep, but also to the hobby itself. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to stay updated on everything Polo Reef. Until next time.